The mentioning of the Macedonians in the Bible is well known, and many works have been written about this fact. However, we will only look at extracts from the Bible strictly from the aspect that we are covering. These extracts are proof of the differences between the ancient Macedonians and the ancient Greeks. In the world science, it is well known that the Christianing of Europe started by Macedonia, especially with the first Christian communities founded by St. Paul. The first Christians that received the Christianity in Europe were Macedonians. The Christianing of these Macedonians was the result of the second missionary journey of St. Paul, the first Christian missionary journey in Europe actually. After he started spreading Christianity all over Asia Minor, St. Paul reached Trioda. He had a vision there in which a Macedonian appeared and asked him to come to Macedonia and help the Macedonians. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him. Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. It is believed that this journey happened between 50 and 52 AD. This means that the first Macedonians in Macedonia were Christian only two and a half decades after Jesus Christ was crucified. All this happened only two centuries after the independent ancient Macedonian state fell apart, when the brave Macedonians still could not accept the Roman occupation. Look the rest of the quotes from the Bible by St. Paul, in which the Macedonians are mentioned. Regarding his missionary journey to Rome, St. Paul writes, And entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian, of Thessalonica being with us. About St. Paul's stay in Ephesus, we read that the Greeks in those territories revolted against his preaching, not wanting to give up their pagan beliefs. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. St. Paul separately mentions the Greeks on a few occasions. During his journey to the Near East, in the Acts of the Apostles, we read, Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and, behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek. About St. Paul's stay in Ephesus, in the same book, we read, And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And further on. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. During his stay in Ephesus, St. Paul addressed the elders and told them he attested both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, 
repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. But St. Paul mentions Greeks as citizens of Thessalonica. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. Still. We cannot conclude that St. Paul believed that the Macedonians were Greeks based on this, because we see that he mentioned the Macedonians separately from the Greeks. This can especially be seen in the Acts of the Apostles, where St. Paul first mentions some Greek, who was the father of Timotheus, and later mentions Aristarchus as Macedonian of Thessalonica. So, we have a clear separation of the Greeks and the Macedonians. Since he mentioned Greeks that lived in Thessalonica, he obviously referred to some ethnic Greeks that lived there. Some might note that the noun Macedonian was referring to a member of the Roman province Macedonia, i.e. that in here it is used as a geographical term. But. The remaining extracts from St. Paul's works clearly deny this. If he determined the people after their administrative origin, then why did he mention Greeks and Jews as citizens of Ephesus? This city in present-day Turkey was in a province that was called neither Judea nor Greece. Furthermore, we see that he mentioned Greeks as citizens of Thessalonica. So if we are to determine them by their administrative belongings, then we should have called them Macedonians as well. Because Thessalonica was in the Roman administrative region called Macedonia. So. St. Paul determined people mainly by their ethnic origins, thus clearly separating the Macedonians from the Greeks. <laughs>